In this lecture, we're going to talk about the static and dynamic uh, allocation of resources. Uh, I put these two together because, it, as you'll see, they're actually they fit really nicely together into a single basic concept. So we're going to start with a very simple case. Imagine that there's some farmer who uses water. The more water the farmer uses, the more um, yield in terms of tons of output that the farmer achieves. Um, however, there is a point at which the total output is maximized and any additional water actually um, diminishes the yield. Now in this graph we've we've put tons on the on the vertical axis, but we could easily put dollars on the vertical axis as we've done here, in which case now our, our curve is not um, total yield but total revenue. Okay? So uh, now let's add cost to the picture. Assume that this farmer has to pay for his or her water. So for every gallon of water they have to pay the same price price, so the cost goes up uh, linearly just like this, and the difference between the total revenue and the total cost uh, would be the profit that the farmer could achieve uh, for any given level of water use, um, let's say during the entire growing season. Profit is maximized, therefore, when when the difference or the distance between the the total co total revenue and the total cost curve is maximized, and that's going to occur at the point where the um, the slope of the, um, the the total revenue curve is the same as the slope of the total cost curve. That's why we have this little dotted line there. So uh, we have uh, our profits, uh, just the distant difference between the, the two curves, that's maximized uh, at the point where the slope of the total revenue is the same as the slope of the total cost. Now, let's instead of working with the total revenue and total cost curve, let's switch down here to the marginal revenue and marginal cost curve. Uh, as um, since the slope of this total cost curve is the same, that means that every unit of water costs exactly the same amount no matter how many the farmer has used, which means that our marginal cost curve is fixed. That is, there's some value uh, that the farmer has to pay per gallon, and, and that is what is paid. The marginal revenue curve, uh, however, is sort of decreasing. That is, it starts out at a steep slope, and then that slope tends to decline, and I've just assumed that that falls at a linear rate right like this. Um, so that's our marginal revenue and marginal cost curve. Um, the difference between the marginal revenue and the marginal cost curve then would be the marginal net revenue, or um, uh, how much additional money the farmer could get if um, if he could use one more uh, drop of water. And you'll see that as long as he will continue to increase the amount of water that the farmer will consume, uh, as long as that uh, more water is generating more uh, net revenue, or that is more profits, until the point where profits are maximized, where the marginal revenue is equal to the marginal cost. Now, um, in this graph, what we've done is something important. It's a little bit um, uh, tricky to see, so let's just go slowly here. On the top graph we have the marginal revenue, marginal cost, and the difference between those is the marginal net revenue. What I've done in the bottom graph is I've assumed that, or I've taken away the marginal cost, and I'm now just graphing marginal net revenue. So um, th we've just ta sort of taken this triangle and we've shifted it down by the amount of the marginal cost to get our, our marginal net revenue curve. And just as Profits are maximized when marginal um, revenue is equal to marginal cost. Profits are also, also maximized when marginal net revenue is equal to zero. And so we have our marginal net revenue curve can give us our profits just as easily as we got it in the marginal revenue and marginal cost curve. Now. There's an important concept uh, that uh, that we want to get at, and that is to think about what happens if a farmer is limited uh, to some quantity of water. Suppose that they can't expand their water beyond Q bar. Well, in that case, uh, they, their profits or their net revenue would be the area underneath the marginal net revenue curve up until the point of Q bar. All right, and it would stop at that point, and this would be the amount that the farmer would be willing to pay to get just a little bit more water um, for uh, his or her crops. We call that the marginal scarcity rent. All right, it's called marginal scarcity rent because rent is when you have a situation where uh, marginal net revenue is positive. That is, uh, they're not uh, uh, behaving in a, in a way that would maximize uh, uh, 
net revenue, um, and the mar it's marginal in the sense that we could get a little extra value. We're going to come back to this concept uh, later. It's a pretty important idea. All right, now let's think about what happens if we've got two identical farmers. We've got farmer one and farmer two. Both of them have exactly the same marginal net revenue curve, uh, decreasing down like this, and we've got um, Q star uh, held by firm uh, that would farmer one would like to use, and Q star is what farmer two would like to use as well. Now, if there's that if there is Q star times two water or more than that, then farmer one will use Q star and farmer two will use Q star. However, what if there's not enough water? Then we've got an allocation problem or an allocation challenge. So let's start with a case where um, there's exactly Q star gallons of water and farmer one's got it all. Let's suppose that farmer one is upstream, so farmer one can extract all of this water from, from the river and, and there's nothing left for farmer two. In that case, uh, the net revenues to the economy of these two farmers would be the area underneath the marginal net revenue curve for, for farmer one and nothing for farmer two. Now it's easy to see that there's an uh, alternative allocations that would lead to more net revenue to society as a whole. So suppose that we take a little bit of water away or or farmer two donates a little or farmer one donates a little bit of water so he decreases the amount of water that he uses by this amount and handing that water over to farmer two she increases her water a little bit so farmer two's net revenue increases by this big area here and farmer one um, net revenue decreases by this little amount which clearly is a an increase in sort of efficiency our, our our societal net revenue has increased and you can see that as we increase um or the amount of water that farmer one gives to farmer two uh the total net revenue to society as a whole uh goes up so for this particular very simple example, uh, we have a situation where if we took Q star over two and we gave half of that to farmer one and half of it to farmer two, that would be the efficient allocation that would maximize uh, the, uh, the net revenue to society as a whole. Um, another way to, to, to think about it is that the allocation is optimal if the marginal scarcity rent to farmer one is the same as the marginal scarcity rent to farmer two. Um, uh, thanks very much. All right, um, and uh, this at when this happens, that means there's no reallocation of the resource that would lead to a more efficient allocation. All right. So we can now summarize the basic ideas of static efficiency. An allocation of resources is efficient if the marginal net benefits to all users is equal. Um, this does not mean that they'll all use the same quantity. It just in that very simple um, example, it, it it came up that way. But in general, we want to allocate the the resource to those who value it most. Um, uh, markets can achieve this, uh, and that's exactly what a price mechanism does. And the marginal scarcity rent will be positive if there's enough of the re if there's not enough of the resource for everyone to get as much as they would like at the efficient allocation. All 